Welcome to hour number two, the morning after, live here on this Wednesday on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. It's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Spiz Grizz Network. That's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. We'll continue to preview the week three slate of the National Football League season later on in this second hour with FanDuel number fires, Jim Saunas, the Saunas Sunday slate returns to TMA. It's also a huge weekend in the world of golf, the President's Cup between Team USA and Team International. Of course, of course, a big focus will be on Live Golf as those golfers not a part of the international or USA sides. We'll have Cam Rogers back on the show to break down the odds for that event as well. I'll give you some Big Ten handicapping and a Big Ten breakdown as we get ready for conference play across the league this upcoming Saturday. But we start here with a historic home stretch for Aaron Judge and the New York Yankees. Last night, bottom of the ninth, the Yankees down by four runs. Aaron Judge steps up to the dish and blasts his 60th home run of the year, making Major League Baseball history. It also led to a Giancarlo Stanton Grand Slam walk-off winner later on in the home half of the ninth as the Yankees beat the Pirates 9-8 to last night. But let's focus on Aaron Judge. 60 home runs now, just the sixth player in Major League Baseball history to hit 60 home runs in an individual season. Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, Roger Maris, and Babe Ruth, the only other five players in MLB history. And Aaron Judge is the first to accomplish this feat in nearly two decades, since 2001. And now Aaron Judge is just one home run shy of tying the American League record set by fellow Yankee Roger Maris with 61 home runs. There was a great great quote going around Babe Ruth when he hit 60 home runs saying, who's ever going to match that? Aaron Judge said, well, I can do that. And I'm proud to be a part of this Yankees organization making this push to the postseason, the first place team in the American League East and resulting in a win over the Buccos last night. It sparked that very big comeback for the pinstripes. And there are just 15 games left in this Major League Baseball regular season. Aaron Judge is minus 20,000 to win the American League MVP. He has the fourth best batting average in the bigs at .316. He, of course, leads Major League Baseball with 60 home runs, 20 more than Kyle Schwarber, who has the second best mark this year, and his 128 RBIs, now the best in the bigs. He is also looking for that triple crown in Major League Baseball. 15 more games left to do that but we're also getting close to October so postseason positioning is front and center around Major League Baseball two teams that should factor into those wild card spots in the American League and the National League facing off against each other yesterday in Philadelphia it's the Blue Jays getting the better of the Phillies yesterday a big win for Toronto in Philly the final score yesterday as I try to find it here throughout my Major League Baseball box scores was 18 to 11. That's what I thought I saw there. I wanted to make sure it was as offensive as I expected. 29 total runs between these two teams. A big day for Toronto, a big day for Philadelphia as well, but it goes in favor of the Blue Jays. We'll look at the wild card standings and the odds for these teams in both leagues in just a moment. But first, we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience here, the second hour of the morning after live on this Wednesday, Sirius XM, channel 159. All of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the fold as well. I am Ben Stevens. So the Blue Jays, a winner yesterday on the road in Philadelphia, 18 to 11. Yes, that game did hit the over. Now Toronto, two and a half games up for the top spot in the American League wildcard standings. Two games in front of Tampa. The Rays hold the second spot. The Mariners hold on to that third and final spot. They have a five-game lead over the Baltimore Orioles. So it's pretty set right now. Pretty set right now who those three American League wildcard teams will be. Only 15 games remaining in this Major League Baseball regular season. It's not as set, though, in the National League. The Phillies holding on to that third and final spot, but still have the advantage in the standings 
over the Milwaukee Brewers at the moment. A two and a half game lead for the Phils, who are a game and a half back of the Padres for that fifth spot in the National League standings right now in that postseason positioning. The Braves have the best odds outside of the Dodgers and the Mets to reach the NLCS plus 160, as you saw. The Padres and the Phillies much longer at the moment. In the American League Championship Series, though, for those teams to reach the ALCS, it's a very different story. And we told you about this yesterday, intriguing to me at least, because the Astros have the best record by a pretty substantial margin in the American League. The Astros are the favorites to win the American League pennant. The Astros will have home field advantage throughout the postseason, yet it's the Yankees with better odds to reach the ALCS than that of the Astros. A far drop-off to the Blue Jays, the Mariners, the Rays, and then the Cleveland Guardians at plus 410. The Cleveland Guardians yesterday taking on the Chicago White Sox and Dylan Cease on the bump for the Southsiders. Right now, the Guardians still a lead in the American League Central, and they win in extras yesterday. So they should be that team out of the Central as well from the AL, heavily favored to do so at the moment. We go to the Big Ten Conference. Conference play starts in that league up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand. And survivor pools for the most part because Pro football I don't deal today. With most important player despite not being quarterback. Focus of it, and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense. In game, in game. Game. I said it'll be a clear track me shootout. Cap in game line. I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kyler Murray, but I am cheering for him in the second half. In game live, oh, overtime. In nine Ks. And I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? In when they were football you know, full circle. Plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount Get of line. Get the movement. winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink. Go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give him money. Smile. That was nice. Want to give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. At Dion Branch, David Gibbons, Tom Brady makes great players. And Cole Beasley, who's a pretty good player in the NFL with Dallas and with Buffalo, is now on the verge of great. Is this really something that serious sports bettors want to do i don't know are you tapping a different market are you maybe tapping a market that's more fantasy inclined when you're going out and you're picking your your players for your team newswire only on sports grid fantasy sports today josh allen with another great game in fantasy football four touchdowns over 300 yards but less running which is really interesting the james cook production all came in garbage time, I think, uh, 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 until the fourth quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, he had four rushes for three yards. Although, if you are looking for a positive signal here, he did get his first rush before Zach Moss got his first rush. The Sports Grid Network.
across the country for week number four of the college football campaign in 2022 conference play truly starts and that is the case in the big 10 welcome back to the morning after live on this wednesday on sports grid i am ben stevens otherwise known as big 10 ben and it's a great slate of big 10 action this weekend a couple of teams that have been heavily favored early on in the non-conference slate see a slight step up in competition in conference action, including the number four team in the country, Michigan, opening the Big Ten season at the Big House in Ann Arbor on Saturday, hosting Maryland. This is one of four matchups we have this weekend in college football, pitting an unbeaten team, Maryland 3-0, against an unbeaten team, Michigan, also a perfect 3-0. But as you can see, Michigan is heavily favored to remain the only unbeaten following this matchup come Saturday afternoon. 16 and a half points now working its way to 17 points in favor of the maize in blue. Now, our boss here at the Sports Grid Network, Greg Sussman, is a proud Maryland alum. Cover your ears, Greg. Actually, keep your ears open for a second because Mike Loxley has been the head coach in College Park since the start of the 20. 20- 19 season maryland a non-conference play since 2019 nine and one straight up with an average margin of victory of 31 and a half points per game that is the third best average margin of victory in that span three plus years only behind georgia and alabama in all of college football maryland is also eight and two against the spread in non-conference play in these three plus seasons with a cover margin of 16.1 points per game that is the best cover margin in all of college football now sus cover your ears because maryland and big 10 play in that same three plus year span just six and 17 straight up and against the spread not covering by an average margin of 8.7 points per game. Their 26.1% cover percentage in conference action is the fourth worst in all of college football. So yes, it makes sense to see Michigan as a 17-point favorite rather against Maryland on Saturday. And Michigan this year has handled its business with one of the easiest non-conference schedules you will see in all of college football. We talked about this yesterday in Ben's Top 10. If Michigan goes out, holds serve, and covers margin against the Terrapins on Saturday, then my thought about them will start to change a little bit because Michigan right now is the leading scoring offense in all of college football, 55.3 points per game. They have the top first half scoring offense in all of college football, 34.3 points per game. And the markets have worked in favor of the Wolverines. Now the second best price to win the Big Ten. It was 8-1 to one before the year got underway. Now plus 410. They won the Big Ten Conference a season ago, but Ohio State is still minus 250, the best odds of any team to win any conference in all of CFB. But Michigan has the sixth best price to make the college football playoff, plus 430. The sixth best odds to win a national championship at 25 to 1. In a big offseason conversation, even early on in the regular season for Michigan, was who was going to be the starting quarterback for Jim Harbaugh? It was biblical in nature. As he spelled it out, Cade McNamara was the starting QB last year that led Michigan to its first victory over over Ohio State in the Jim Harbaugh tenure of seven years in Ann Arbor. It was Cade McNamara that led Michigan to its first Big Ten title in the Jim Harbaugh tenure. It was Cade McNamara that led Michigan to its first appearance in the college football playoff. But it's J.J. McCarthy that will be the starting quarterback the rest of the way for the Wolverines. The incredibly talented sophomore now is also 30 to 1 to win the Heisman Trophy despite only making two starts so far this year. He is now tied for the sixth best number on the FanDuel Sportsbook. But as you look across the Big Ten, it's CJ Stroud, the quarterback for Ohio State at 2 to 1, who is the betting favorite to win the Heisman at the moment. Stroud so far this year, 11 touchdown passes, zero interceptions. But Blake Corum, also has a pretty significant start to this season. The running back for Michigan is 60 to one, one of the better prices we have seen on running backs in the Heisman Trophy race. And that offensive front, that offensive line for Michigan, one of the best, if not the best, in all of college 
football. So pay attention to those prices as Michigan and Ohio State now start Big Ten play. The Buckeyes also a three-score favorite on Saturday with a step up in competition, we expect, against Wisconsin. But Ohio State at the shoe on Saturday night, an 18 and a half point favorite with an over-under that stands currently at 56 and a half. This is the first meeting between the Badgers and the Buckeyes since the 2019 Big Ten Championship game in Indianapolis. Ohio State was trailing Wisconsin 21 to 7 at the break. But then Justin Fields and the Buckeyes responded on their way to a Big Ten championship in an appearance in the college football playoff. They won that game 34 to 21. As you look at that 18 and a half point spread in favor of Ohio State on Saturday, it should not be that big of a surprise. The Buckeyes have won eight straight against the Badgers over the course of the last decade plus with an average margin of victory of 16.8 points per game. There is a reason that every single year, Ohio State starts off as a heavy odds-on favorite to win the Big Ten Championship. That win over Wisconsin, by the way, to win that Big Ten title in 2019 was the third consecutive for the Buckeyes. They made it four straight in 2020. They lost to Michigan last year, and it was the Wolverines that won the Big Ten Championship. The Big Ten Championship has pitted the East Division versus the West Division now for eight years. The East has won all eight. Ohio State has won five of those eight. So at minus 250, it should be no surprise to see Ohio State as the heavy odds-on favorite even now following three weeks of action as we get ready for Big Ten play. But keep an eye on Penn State, the Nittany Lions now a top 15 team they are 10 to 1 Wisconsin is 17 to 1 the best odds of any team out of the Big Ten West but if you're betting a team to win the Big Ten title and you want value from the Big Ten West because that division's champion plays in Indianapolis your only look should be Minnesota at 19 to 1 the Golden Gophers have a tough test in its conference opener a big step up in competition for the row the boaters and P.J. Fleck on Saturday in East Lansing, Minnesota, and Michigan State. Minnesota just a three-and-a-half-point favorite on the road against the Spartans, who faltered in a big way last week on the road in Washington against the Huskies in Seattle. The first loss for Michigan State this year. They entered that game ranked 11th in the country. They are now on the outside of the top 25. I believe the Golden Gophers have a legitimate case to be a top 25 team as they have the second best total offense in the country, averaging more than 550 yards per game. They have the second best total defense in the country, limiting their opponents to about a buck 70 per game. And they have the second best rushing offense in all of college football, only behind Air Force, a service academy that runs the triple option. Minnesota averages 312 yards per game on the ground. Know the name Muhammad Ibrahim. He is one of the best, if not the best running backs In all of the Big Ten Conference, I expect that to be a focal point for the Gophers if they want to win and cover as a a three-and-a-half-point favorite against Michigan State in East Lansing on Saturday. Now, this is a Big Ten breakdown. I am Big Ten Ben. I would be remiss if I did not mention one of the best totals my two eyes have ever seen. 34-and-a-half is the number for Iowa and Rutgers in Piscataway on Saturday. 34-and-a-half. It is one of the lowest totals in the last eight years between two Power 5 opponents in college football. I have already bet the under. If you bet the over, it might hit. Sure, there might be a college football game with a total that ends with a combined 35 points. But you bet the under to live out history. You bet the under to tell your grandkids and have your grandkids tell their grandkids that old grandpapa was on the under of 34 and a half between Iowa and Rutgers. We have a President's Cup preview with Cam Rogers up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. With a game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today. Because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. 
it's the island of misfit toys. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand. Survivor pools for the most part because pro football I don't today. With most important player despite not being quarter focus of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense and a half in game in this in game. Game. I said it'll be a clear track me shootout half in game line. I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kylo Murray but I am cheering for him in the second half in game live overtime in 9 Ks. And I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? It in when they were football you know, full circle, plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of get line the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your twenty four seven sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink, go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give them money. Smile. That was nice, you wanna give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. And Dion Branch, David Gibbons, Tom Brady makes great players. And Cole Beasley, who's a pretty good player in the NFL with Dallas and with Buffalo, is now on the verge of greatness. Is this really something that serious sports bettors want to do? I don't know. Are you tapping a different market? Are you maybe tapping a market that's more fantasy inclined when you're going out and you're picking your, your players for your team? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Josh Allen with a, another great game in fantasy football. Four touchdowns, over 300 yards, but less running, which is really interesting. The James Cook production all came in garbage time, I think, uh, 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 until the fourth quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, he had four rushes for three yards. Although, if you are looking for a positive signal here, he did get his first rush before Zach Moss got his first rush. The Sports Grid Network. Football season for sure, both on the college level and in the NFL, of course. But a huge weekend in the world of golf is about to begin here very, very shortly. The President's Cup is back. Team USA, Team Internationals. And we have a President's Cup preview for you here live on this Wednesday on the morning after. Cam Rogers is also back. The host of the Lock It In podcast for Believe, our golf insider, expert, here with us once again on this Wednesday. Cam, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and to preview the President's Cup that we have this upcoming week. What's going on, Ben? Good to be back with you here on Sports Grid. If I am going to draw a football parallel to this weekend, this is Alabama versus Vanderbilt, USA big-time mm. favorites. 40 and a half is the spread in favor of Alabama against Vandy in the Tides SEC opener. But that's how it feels for Team USA versus Team International. The U.S. Cam has won eight straight. The U.S. has won 11 of the 13 President's Cups in the history of this event. There has been one tie, and the Internationals have only won a single time. As we look at the outright spread, or the outright number, I should say, we see those do that dominance reflected in the odds. Team USA is minus 700. <laughs> So why are the Americans so dominant in the President's Cup? Yeah, Ben, here's the reality of the situation. There's so much talent, so much elite play on the PGA Tour coming out of the United Kingdom. And those golfers in particular obviously are not part of the internationals team. Here's the other thing. Cam Smith, Joaquin Neiman, they're livers now. So they can't mm -hmm. play 
for the President's Cup. So that actually adds a big time dent to the internationals as well. And then really, it's just a testament to the depth of golf here in the United States, Ben. I mean, we saw so many amazing breakthroughs on the PGA Tour from a lot of American golfers, Scotty Scheffler, Sam Burns, Tony Finau. I mean, Tony Finau has been around, but back-to-back wins in the past year for Tony Finau. Max Homa, who, by the way, just won last week at the Fortinet Championship. So American golf right now is in such a good place. And that's not an indictment on the internationals team. A lot of good talent on that side as well. Sunjay M, really, really good. Tom Kim won, of course, this past PGA Tour season. But they just don't stack up at all with this USA team here, here's the deal. If you're going to play that minus 700 number, please do me a favor and parlay that with some football picks or something like that this weekend, because otherwise it makes no sense to me then. Yeah, very big money line favorites this weekend. Go across to Alabama against Vanderbilt or Ohio State against Wisconsin. Maybe even the Buffalo Bills against the Miami Dolphins, if you're into that sort of thing, because minus 700 is substantial. But Cam, it's a team event. It's a different format than what we see on a weekly basis on the PGA Tour. So let's look at the tournament four ball winner. Of course, Team USA heavily favored in this market as well. Cam, as we try to help the casual better, better understand the President's Cup, how do you explain the format of what we will see this weekend at Quail Hollow in Charlotte? Yeah, it's going to be a big weekend of golf here. I love team golf. It's always exciting. Quail Hollow Country Club. We know this golf course, Ben, pretty darn well. Major championships, the Wells Fargo Championship. This is a big-time ballpark. So we're looking at driving distance as a major key here this week. And you look at the American side, a lot of bombers off the tee. Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas, Tony Finau down the line from there. We're playing Thursday through Sunday, five foursome matches on thursday that's alternate shot friday Mm -hmm. is best ball saturday morning saturday afternoon four foursomes matches four four ball matches and then we have sunday singles which i would assume by the time sunday comes around then will be singles exhibition matches because this thing will be done by the time midday maybe sunday comes around all matches are worth one point first team to get to 15 and a half points wins the President's Cup, the big storyline for me, obviously, you alluded to it at the beginning, USA dominance, and then also international inexperience. Eight rookies on the international side here. Can they rise to the occasion under the bright lights here this week? That's going to be a big-time storyline. And a final note here about this format. Historically, the USA side has been so good in alternate shot, but the internationals actually lead head-to-head in four ball so in best ball the internationals actually have the edge so maybe some edge there if you want to place a bet and that's where we saw team usa minus 290 uh favorite to win the tournament four ball outright with the internationals plus 320 so cam you mentioned the format when it starts on thursday to be that day one winner team usa heavily favored in that market as well but if they are going to cash that minus 700 ticket and win the ninth straight president's cup for the americans how important is that fast start early on at quail hollow super critical because here's the thing ben if you start slow if you are the usa side then the international side starts to have some hope right to use a football parallel let's say vanderbilt is right there with alabama at halftime oh my gosh vanderbilt has hope and so you know they're feeling the vibes in the locker room they come out at halftime and then maybe maybe stun Alabama. That's not going to happen. But I'm just saying you don't want to give the internationals hope here after day one. This is your American soil. You're defending your title here on the U.S. side. You need to come out strong, and I think they will. Alternate shot, big-time advantage here for the USA side just because I think there are a lot of great pairings to come here. Patrick Cantlay, Xander Shoffley is going to be an amazing pairing. They won the Zurich Classic of New Orleans just this past year. They have ultra good chemistry. I think a lot of these guys will have good chemistry together. Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, they're best friends. So put that all together. The USA is a lock for me on day one. They cannot afford to lose alternate shot because as I alluded to, Four ball, best ball, historically has gone to the internationals. And so if the internationals win day two as well, look out. So Cam, before we get to your top props for the President's Cup, we looked at that outright price. Team USA minus 
700 because of the dominance we have seen in the President's Cup. But you can also look at that point spread. Yes, a point spread for golf. So what is your approach to actually finding the best bet for Team USA to win its ninth straight President's Cup? Yeah, absolutely. You have to treat this like a football game again. I mean, the money line situation just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Again, Team USA is 11-1-1 at this event. I like the spread at minus five and a half. I won't go any deeper than that because I think that's just disrespectful at that point to the international side. I don't expect this to be an absolute just wipe up the floor, if you will, because the internationals still have some experience, especially with Hideki Matsuyama and Adam Scott. So I think that spread of minus five and a half makes a lot of sense to me. I think the USA team gets to 19, something along those lines, and then you know just go ahead and do that math from there. So I think that minus five and a half number is good. I've seen some places at minus seven and a half, minus eight and a half. I just can't go that deep, but minus five and a half seems like a nice happy medium for me. And that will be a way of looking at the spread to find some more profitability instead of having to lay minus 700 for what we feel is a certain outcome. Or maybe we look into the prop market because many different options for the President's Cup this weekend in Charlotte. Cam, the top combined point scores. There's that market on the FanDuel Sportsbook. The 10 best prices all coming from Team USA before you get to Sung J M and Hideki Matsuyama who have the best odds for Team Inter. National. So you see a very heavily stacked American flag on this board up here. Who do you think individually, Cam, has the best week at Quail Hollow? Yeah, I really like Justin Thomas. And a big time important point about this board here is to make sure that you're picking somebody who you know is going to play the maximum amount of matches here this week. Justin Thomas is going to be that guy. He's right there at 10 to 1. I like that number a lot. Xander Shoffley I like as well. But this is Justin Thomas's President's Cup, in my opinion. A couple of reasons why. Really great experience here at this particular event. Loves Quail Hollow. You may recall he won the PGA Championship at this very golf course. It's a big-time ballpark. JT has the driving distance you need. And again, he's going to have that data that you want, the amount of reps during this President's Cup that you want to guarantee at least that you give yourself a good shot here. Uh, you know, going with somebody like Cameron Young or Max Homa, they may not play as often as Justin Thomas this week. So top overall scorer, JT is my pick. That's great from a volume perspective. It's how you handicap any prop to make sure you'll have the opportunity to hit that over or to cash that ticket. So it's JT as your top combined point scorer, your top USA point scorer. But as you look at the other side for the internationals or maybe some of the wild card picks, Cam, take us to the prop board for the President's Cup. Yeah, absolutely. Love these props. Let's have some fun here this week. Obviously, I like Justin Thomas. Big time to be the top American side scorer here this week, plus 650 there. By the way, hole in one, I'm saying yes on that, plus 600. Let's have some fun here, Ben, huh? This golf course is going to be pretty gettable from what I understand. The rough isn't going to be that bad. It should be pretty scorable overall. Adam Scott on the international side of things, really good experience here at the President's Cup. I think he will get a lot of reps this week. So put him in there at plus 600. And then top wild card point scorer, first timer, Billy Horschel at 14 to 1. I like this play a lot just because Billy Horschel loves match play. He's a grinder, he's a hot, streaky putter, he's a guy who loves the competition. Florida Gator, you know, comes from a good college background with all the match play that you play in college as well. Was right there at the WGC match play, right there for Billy Horschel, 14 to 1. There you go. Listen, a couple of vocal voices here too. JT, Billy Horschel in terms of the PGA Tour versus Live Golf. And we're not going to see any Live Golfers at the President's Cup. Another time to make a statement. Cam Rogers, the host of the Lock It In podcast for Believe. Great talking golf with you once again in your President's Cup preview. We go back to the National Football League up next. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. 
Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. It is really all about winning, but at the end of the day, if anyone tells you it's not about winning money, they're lying to you. Why do we DFS? Why do we play in these leagues? Why do we pay so much attention? It's because we want to win and we want to win the money. If you have some wide receivers that might have two or three weeks of tough corner matchups ahead of them, don't just get all bent out of shape about these guys. In fact, go find them, target them in other leagues, and trade for them. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. The level of suckness goes here, Scott, on the suckness scale. Um, Hawaii is not going to suck as bad as Duquesne is. I love my Canes, and they hate me in Tallahassee, obviously. But I wanted to say that last night was the first time in 20 years that I bet on Florida State in a football game. I won't even let my kid go look at the school. In-game live all access only on SportsGrid. The morning after. What do the Tennessee Titans need to change on the ground to get Derrick Henry back to what we expect for the King? The Tennessee Titans are a run first team. That is their identity, right? You run the ball to set up the pass. That is where they start their entire offense and they go from there. So obviously when the run game isn't working, the whole offense is starting to struggle and stall, especially when you don't have a top wide receiver. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Tonight, I guess they've activated Bader. What can fans expect to see from the gold glove outfielder with tons of speed who's been out all year with plantar fasciitis? Well, he's an outstanding uh, center fielder, you know, won the gold glove. Uh, I think the fans will love him a lot. I mean, he's a gamer, plays a game very hard, great defense, and well, it's under with Aaron Judge back to his natural position, right field. The Sports Grid Network. The return of the Jim Sonis Sunday slate. Looking forward to your weekend games in the National Football League for week number three. Yes, even on a Wednesday. We get to do that here on the morning after. Jim Sonis joins us now from FanDuel and Number Fire to break down weekend number three of the NFL. Sonis, it is great to have you back to do that. We love our alliteration here on the morning after. So the return of the Sonis Sunday slate is a very special thing. Yeah, I'm excited too. Uh, the problem, Ben, is I'm a little nervous about week three because a lot of the places I've got money on are making me uncomfy, like betting on Mitch Trubisky, betting on Ooh. the Houston Texans. I've got, Ooh. okay, I shouldn't, but I have money on the Cardinals again. I realize I should just like take my winnings and like never, never talk about them ever again. But like, you know, it kind of worked. So I don't know. Work, uh, I don't know. I'm a little uncomfy, but we'll see how this plays out. Jim, the card's part of those two. 20-point comebacks that we saw on Sunday. Down 20 to nothing at the break and into the third quarter against the Raiders. Arizona comes back to win in overtime. And then, of course, the Dolphins and the Ravens. Miami down 35-14. Three touchdowns in the early portion of the fourth quarter, and they air it out to Atunga Bailoa, Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, and they come back to beat the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. So there's the highlights, right, of Miami and Kyler and Arizona but there's also the flip side of that conversation. How do the teams that saw their huge leads evaporate bounce back the following Sunday? Baltimore is on the road, a touchdown favorite in New England against the Patriots. So, Jim, very simply, how do the Ravens bounce back? 
Yeah, I mean, it's tough because they are kind of banged up right now. They've got some injuries in the secondary. They did have some guys play through it last week, but obviously not a full health. Now, covering Tyreek Hill, Joe, and Waddle is a lot different than like Nelson Aguilar and Devontae Parker. So that, that will help them quite a bit. But my yeah. numbers are showing some value on the Patriots side of things here. It's plus three right now. I've got them as uh, 1.35. Uh, or sorry, 1.66 point dogs for this game. So a bit of value in betting in the Patriots. I have not pulled the trigger on that one as of yet. One thing I may turn towards, though, is potentially the total in this game, 43 and a half. I kind of like the over there. My numbers like the over for the Ravens game last week, and they kind of like it here as well because the Ravens, they have no healthy running backs, no good healthy running backs. They can't run the football. They've been throwing the football quite a bit, similar to last year, and they've been throwing it pretty effectively thus far. I'm not sure the Patriots... You know, they're they're better than the Dolphins, but maybe not an upper echelon defense need to necessarily avoid. So some interest here in the total. I I don't want to really put money on the Patriots side of things from a side perspective. So I think if I want exposure nice. to this game, I might turn towards the total over 43 and a half. It's minus 106 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, and I think there is some value in over in that number right now. The Ravens lost week number two. Every other team in the AFC North lost week number two as well, but Baltimore remains the favorites at even money plus 100. The fourth best price still to win the AFC championship for Baltimore at plus 950. And Jim, all off season long, we talked about how competitive this conference was going to be. Eight, nine, ten teams maybe in contention for a conference title. Well, after two weeks... There seems to be a small bit of separation between the Bills and the Chiefs and the rest of the field in the AFC. Buffalo, the favorites at plus 240. The Chiefs, a dollar and 20 cents behind at plus 360. How do you evaluate the AFC following two weeks of NFL action? I think we might be seeing a bit of an overreaction right now in the Bengals at 16-1. to 1. I know that it's looked really bad, and it definitely has. But they've also faced a pair of pretty tough defenses. Obviously, T.J. Watt played most of that game before leaving due to injury. Mick Fitzpatrick is there. And then going up against Dallas last week, like Micah Parsons is kind of a game wrecker. So you've got this offensive line. They have not played well thus far. Joe Burrow has not helped in matters by any means, holding on the ball too long. But... You do expect things to improve as the year goes along. You get more cohesion along that offensive line. They may go from being abhorrently awful to a little bit better. Uh, given the, the all the guys added in there, it makes sense they would struggle early on. They still got T. Higgins. They still got Jamar Chase. Still got Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon. I like a lot of the personnel this team does have. So if I look at my power rankings right now, they're currently 12th overall. That's not super, super high. That might not tempt yeah. you when you've got the – Bills and the Chiefs at the top and justifiably there. I think there might be value in the Chiefs even to plus 360, but I think if you're looking for a long shot in the AFC right now, I do expect things to improve for this Bengals offense. The AFC North, probably not going to get away from them. I'm a bit lower on the Ravens than a lot of people are, so I think that they mm. could still be in play to win this division. Probably not going to get a that first round by uh, with the one seed, and that does hurt things for sure, but I still think there's upside in this team. So 16-1, to 1, I think is a Bit of an overreaction for a team I'm still pretty high on overall this year. The reigning AFC champs, winless though so far for Cincinnati, an opportunity to change that as a four and a half point road favorite in MetLife against the New York Jets this upcoming Sunday. Everybody, even those dogs, want to be barking on Sunday afternoon. And the Miami Dolphins, Jim, an underdog at home in South Beach against the Buffalo Bills. Just three remaining unbeatens in the AFC. Both of these teams in the Kansas City Chiefs. How do you evaluate this matchup between the Bills and the Dolphins where the line has worked in Buffalo's favor, ballooned up to six, but down by a hook now at five and a half in favor of the Bills? Yeah, my numbers are still showing value in Miami, but I don't want to touch it. I'm petrified of Josh Allen. I think that if my numbers are off anywhere, and like they could be off a lot of places, but I think the most likely area where they're off is being a bit too low on this Bills offense. Now, again, I mentioned before, the Bills are number one of my power rankings right now, but I wouldn't be shocked if they're actually a bit too low relative to that too because you think about the way these first two games have gone they've been allowed to be pretty conservative in the second halves of games because why wouldn't you when you're up by like 20 in both those games so they've been allowed to take their foot off the gas which i think will allow them to be a bit underrated right now going down to miami miami's secondary is still a little bit beat up we saw that at times in that uh that baltimore game as well I'm expecting slash hoping Gabe Davis plays here because I want to use Gabe Davis in DFS. Uh, but I think that when you look at this game, 
I can see a lot of scenarios where things don't go well for Miami. So I am showing value in Miami right now, plus five and a half. I will not be betting that. I would need to move, uh, you know, move back the way it, it, the reverse for where it's gone recently. I need a big, bigger number than five and a half to bet it because Josh Allen scares me a whole lot. Uh, we've seen the Bills defense give to uh, some fits so far in the times they have faced him. I love what they're doing. I love the the approach the Dolphins have had so far, but I just I'm scared of betting against Josh Allen. So although I'm showing value here, it's stay away from me. Hopefully, I can just sit back and enjoy. If it's a close game, cool. I benefit as a fan, as a football as a football fan. But I'm okay, missing out if that bet would have cashed, even though I am showing value there. Through two weeks, the Bills have outscored their opponents 72-17. to They have an average margin of victory of 27.5 points per game. Now, Miami has been good, but I don't know if I would look to lay only or get 5.5 only with Miami this weekend. As we look at these two teams, Jim, of course, the Bills, the favorites in the AFC East, the favorites to win the AFC. The Dolphins' price is improving, though, as well. Miami now minus 188 to make the postseason. You brought up the Arizona Cardinals earlier. The Cardinals back at home this week, an underdog against the Rams. The first road game for the Rams this year. Now, under Sean McVay, L.A. has been dominant in this matchup against their divisional foe in Arizona. 10-1 is that straight-up record under McVay. But you mentioned that the Cardinals might have some value based on your numbers. What's your approach to this matchup in the NFC West? Yeah, I was trying to swear them off uh, mid- at uh, halftime last week. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to like, even if my numbers show value in the Cardinals, I'll never bet them again. They'll just be on my cross-off list. But then they had to do that stupid thing where they come back in the second half and they actually win that game. So here I am again against my better judgment, betting the Cardinals. I got them at four. It's three and a half right now. Still showing value there. I've got this as a point nine point game in favor of the Rams. So the Rams are favored by my numbers, but not by all that much. Part of it is... My numbers are probably too high in the Cardinals, but also Troy Hill's out for the for the Rams. That's a downgrade to their right. defensive secondary. The defense kind of let the Falcons get back in that game on Sunday, which is weird. I know Marcus Mariota is the best quarterback of all time, so that's part of it for sure. But the defense <laughs> has underwhelmed thus far. Now facing Kyler Murray, might get Rondale Moore back this week. They're getting a bit healthier. A lot of the injuries they had were not long-term things, so still no DeAndre Hopkins, but... I can see it. Like I said, I bet it at four. I'm not sure I'd recommend it, though. And that's a key distinction. Like, I did it myself. I'm okay wasting right. my money on the Cardinals. I don't want to recommend you waste your own money. So I'm doing it. If you want to follow along, cool. Uh, you know, you did this to yourself. But I think right. that there is still value. Whether or not you want to bet it is up to you. I bet it. But, you know, I have I feel like I've hopefully learned my lesson. But apparently I have not on the Cardinals. Three playoff teams from the NFC West a season ago, including both the Rams and the Cardinals and the Niners. All three lost the opening weekend of the NFL season, but all rebounded with a win week number two. Let's go to the marquee matchup, perhaps, Jim, of the Sunday slate. Number 12, Tom Brady for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus number 12, Aaron Rodgers, and the Green Bay Packers. An incredibly short spread, only a point and a half now, live on the FanDuel Sportsbook in favor of the Buccaneers. Jim, with a relatively low total as well at 41 and a half who do you think has the edge on Sunday Tom and Tampa Bay or Aaron and Green Bay I think if I were to bet this game I'd probably lean towards the Packers money line at plus 108 there's a pretty interesting split here where the their spread is uh, plus one and a half minus 110 but you could just instead go with the the money line at plus 108 and I do show some value there I've got their win odds at 49.6 percent so basically a toss-up right now the implied odds at a uh, plus 108 are 48.1 percent so some value there on the Packers and I don't disagree with it Akeem Hicks gonna miss this game obviously you no know, Mike Mike Evans depending on the outcome of his uh, appeal I don't think he's gonna win that so I'm fine uh, penciling him out right now Chris Godwin I don't think it's gonna go either so you're getting Tom Brady behind a beat-up offensive line Donovan Smith was doubtful this past week he's iffy to go this one as well so Tom Brady behind a banged up offensive line throwing to you know Russell Gage Scotty Miller no disrespect to Scotty Miller um, mm-hmm. uh, no disrespect to Brashad Perriman and stuff like that but that's a pretty banged up offense facing off against the Packers team that played very well on Sunday against the Bears. So I think that if I were to bet this game, I would go towards the the 
Packers money line here. Plus 108. I think it's a very fair number. They are healthier right now. Maybe David, David Bakhtiari can play for this game. Not really sure on that one. Elton Jenkins, though, uh, trending up for sure. So I think I like the Packers here. The money line is my, my favorite route for going at this one. Plus 108, a good number facing a very, very banged up Buccaneers team. The line working in favor of the Packers as of right now. It was two and a half at the open. Now only a point and a hook. That was the Jim Saunas Sunday slate. Also the Texans getting three on the road in Soldier Field against the Bears. But what about the Jim Saunas Thursday night slate? You mentioned (laughs) backing Mitchell Trubisky and the Pittsburgh Steelers as a four and a half point underdog now against the Cleveland Browns. Jim, only about a minute left. But what's your approach for tomorrow night's debut of week three? Yeah, I got this at five and a half. I'm okay standing pat there. It's at four and a half right now. Still showing some value on that number on the Steelers side of things. Miles Garrett's banged up. Not sure if he'll be able to go. Some injuries along the offensive line for Cleveland as well. I think the the Cleveland Browns should be able to run the football pretty effectively here, which is why I'd prefer to go with the points versus the money line of the Steelers. But the low scoring game, four and a half points is quite a bit. Don't have faith in Trubisky, but I also have a lot of faith in Jacoby Brissett. So I'm fine riding with the Steelers here and taking them uh, plus four and a half still. I prefer it at five and a half, which it was before, but at four and a half, still some value there betting against a weird, banged up Browns team. Jim is a Northwestern grad, a Big Ten guy through and through, was in Dublin for the season opener. He sees a total of 38 and a half. (laughs) <laughs> and a smile crumbs across his face, I am sure. It's like Iowa and Rutgers on Saturday, Jim. 34 yeah. and a half. Are you on the under? Sure. Let's ride with it. Why not? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he's on the right side of history. Jim Saunas from Number <laughs> Fire and FanDuel. Thank you for everything. The Saunas Sunday slate and some Thursday picks mixed in as well. We round out the morning after. Up next, live right here on Sports. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game penguins. time decisions. But this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live, win. prime oh, yeah, time. In game live, overtime. All done before the final bet can get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. prove how much better they are than Texas, this actually matters. Winning this game 65-0 matters. Because, see, they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52-10. to Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing, on average, eight points per game. They held Kent State to just three points last week, Kev, and we talked about that total mm-hmm. on last week's show. College football today, only on Sports Grid. The early line. You look at the pick for Garrett Wilson. Okay, you know, big guy coming from a big program. Got to step up here. Oh, no, he's going to take a downgrade because maybe his quarterback isn't as good. That's an unbelievable performance. And also, let's take a look at the pressures that he had. Going back to the state of Ohio where he's got some legendary status there. Eight for 102 and two scores in a monster comeback, which he was a big part of here. And also, take a look at Chris Olave. Where is he going to fit in? You're right. He's supposed to be that third wheel option. Learn under the other two. Vets. Only on Sports Grid. Sports professor Riccardo into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Anatomy of the Amazon Prime Thursday night deal that everybody is up in arms up. Well, clearly not the NFL. A multi-billion dollar 11-year deal, about a billion a year. Those are found dollars that nobody expected. What about the consumer? A lot of articles about how hard it is to find, but that was expected in the marketing plan. Remember, there are about 172 million current subscribers for Amazon and Amazon Prime in the U.S., about 200 million globally. That's a big number, but they want more. 
and at $15 a month, they're going to try as much as they can to get more. The plan is this. Try to find the games on Thursday night. Get upset because it's not there. Find out how to get it and then realize that it's really not that expensive relative to everything else you get and the subscriptions continue to go up. That's what Amazon bets on. Closing out our two hours together here, live on this Wednesday on the morning after on Sports Grid, Sirius XM, channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Spiz Grizz Network, that's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us here on this Wednesday. Now, you all know this by now if you've been watching this show for a while. If this is your first time, thank you so much for joining us. But I'm a huge college football fan, a college football fan first and foremost, and Often here on the morning after, because of the NFL, which we also love because football in football is just the best, when we get to Thursday night, it's a best bet for Thursday night football. Tomorrow, it's the Browns and the Steelers. Friday, I try to leave you with an NFL bet as we get you set for the weekend so you can look back and get ready for Sunday. So I don't often get to give you college football best bets here on the morning after. And I know it's a Wednesday, and I know we're a few days away from a great Saturday slate as conference play around the country truly gets underway. I need to take this time to look at a line that I think is mispriced and give you, hopefully, an early edge. So before we say farewell and before we say goodbye, it's time for a college football best bet. It's time for Bye Bye Bye. It's a big day in the SEC come Saturday, including in Dallas on a neutral field, Arkansas and Texas A&M. The Aggies are still the favorites in this game. It's only one and a half point spread. I don't think Texas A&M deserves to be the favorite on a neutral field. I think Arkansas is the better football team because of what they can do offensively versus where A&M lacks offensively, especially through their aerial attack. So let's get on this number early before it starts to change throughout the week and maybe even flip on Saturday. The Hogs going to woo pig suey in Dallas outright on the money line at plus 115. Arkansas is a great running football team. Both KJ Jefferson and Raheem Sanders, who is the fourth leading rusher in all of college football. A&M ranks dead last in scoring offense out of the 14 SEC teams so far this season. All part of the handicap. The morning after, back on a Thursday on Sports Grid, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern.